and welcome to Inside Edition to discuss national, regional and international issues in depth. The Kingdom of Bahrain is a pioneer in the region in championing women's rights as it has been pressing for a greater political, economic and social empowerment of women across all areas based on the belief that women are a key element in the development of the country. Recognizing that comprehensive development cannot be achieved without the active participation of women, the government of Bahrain actively seeks to integrate women's needs in national strategies and development programs. Bahraini women have assumed leading positions in various fields of work and responsibilities, including high-holding, high-diplomatic and decision-making posts. While in 2002 it was a novelty in the modern history of Bahrain, the sight of women campaigning to be elected at both municipal municipal and parliamentary elections is another story of success in the National Democratic March. As women were trained on all aspects of participating in elections and were encouraged to take part in running and voting. Today, Bahraini women celebrate 15 years of being a vital pillar of representatives council and municipal councils, looking forward to continue their success and take part at the next quadrennial elections in, on the 24th of November. To discuss uh, those achievements, and challenges, we are joined today by Shura Council Member Dr. Fatma Al Kohiji. But first, this for more. The reform project of His Majesty all these years has really opened doors to wide horizons in all aspects. And uh, of course, we have 18.8% uh, of women holding parliamentary seats. We see today approximately, according to the recent statistics, 74.4% of women in our country hold or have reached uh, a qualification of a secondary level education or higher education compared to 80.4% of their male counterparts. Uh, so this in itself showing uh, the balance that, that's coming about, uh, the role that women play, and in general, women are known to be able to juggle. It's in their genes that they juggle uh, family responsibilities, their career. They're able to manage somehow by the grace of God. Um, and I would also like to, um, to share that regardless of whether the MP running for election is male or female, most important for the voter is to analyze according to the credibility of the person. So it's not because she's a female that I'm just going to vote for her. If she is capable and she can prove herself in that capacity to serve her nation and to serve the people, then well and good. Go out there and give your vote uh, to whoever you feel is uh, the best eligible for it. Woman empowerment, it's not like the basic empowerment that we are talking about 10, 20 years ago. Now Bahrain is talking about advanced empowerment to the woman. It's not the, you know, it's not the, like, uh, before 20 years, maybe, we are thinking about having a woman as a manager in a, ba in a bank, or as, let us say, um, uh, a lawyer, um, and, uh, you know, uh, or as a um, consultant, or as, uh, let us say, um, a head of, uh, you know, a hospital, or, you know, um, a manager in a hospital. No more we are looking to that now. The woman in Bahrain had, had achieved many of achievements. Women in Bahrain now, we are not talking about the achievements in, in a political side only, but also we are talking about, you know, woman has achieved many of, you know, achievements outside Bahrain. You can see, you can follow the Bahrainese women. They are member now in many agencies and many organizations, international organizations towards like human rights and, uh, organizations. Many women, they are really, you know, um, uh, being active in, in such, you know, um, organizations. Now in Bahrain, we are looking to the woman to be as a minister or looking to, at her to be as, you know, running um, a campaign uh, in the parliament, to be as a parliamentarian or to be in Shura Council. And this is how we are looking to the woman. So uh, comparing the woman 20 years ago and now, we are really very proud of the woman. As I said, it's not only internally, uh, not only nationally, but it is also jumped, uh, the woman, Bahraini, Bahraini women jumped towards 
uh, international achievements. And that's what we are really very happy to see that. Everybody noticed that uh, by the years, um, the empowerment of women really pushes women um, you know, more and more to achieve and contribute um, to the development of Bahrain overall. Um, I'm very happy and glad that too, too many women will be part of this process. Um, and I wish uh, them all the best. I wish to see more women in the parliament um, the coming year. Um, I wish them all the best and uh, the support of the community and the support of our leadership really pushed us to give our best. So we are here today because of our leadership and because of um, the society believes in women and the society empowers women. And we don't really want to forget the Supreme Council of Women, uh, which really contributes since 2002 till date uh, with all its programs and initiatives. So it's, it's really shaped the way even the women look um, to themselves and what they're expecting from themselves. So inshallah, we will see uh, good results and uh, the future will be uh, brighter um, and uh, looking forward uh, to see the results. Welcome back and joining us in the studio is Dr. Fatma al -Kuhiji. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Um, Dr. Fatma, now, we've seen um, how women have been empowered by the leadership, by the people themselves over the, the years, the past years, not just the past few years, like for, yeah. for a while now. How do you value the current representation of women at the municipal councils as well as the parliament and its various committees? Uh, thank you for having me with you, Sarah. Okay. Since the launch of His Majesty's Reform Project, uh, we have noticed that the Bahraini woman really is improving a lot and changing from position to another, especially in a legislative uh, uh, field. Yes. And uh, we see that this progress is ongoing. Yes. And this is all because of the support of His Majesty and of course the Royal Highness uh, Princess Sabika that really she put an aim for us mm -hmm. to empower the woman politically and they are running programs and, and the Supreme Council of Women yes. which is of course chaired by uh, Her Royal Highness and uh, we see that so many women are now because they are gaining lots of things after the uh, four uh, munches that went. Now this is the fifth uh, yes. term. We see that they are really optimistic and looking forward to be in these seats. Yes. We see that today, uh, for example, 50% uh, of the leaders, committee leaders in Shura councils are women. Yes. The second deputy is a woman for the whole legislative Mass term. Number. Yes, and imagine that 15% are women in the Shura and per, uh, the parliament. If we compare it to different countries, but we see it is a big number, yes. and especially Bahrain is not taking the quota system. Yes. So that means the women are really being well uh, empowered yes. and they are willing to be in these seats, I feel. Yes. Well, um, just to mention a few, we've seen a couple of them on the show. I mean, uh, you <coughs> in the Shura Council, uh, Ms. Nancy Khuduri, also yeah. Shura Council. In the Representative uh, Council, we have Ms. Jamila Simak, Ms. Ra Al Hayeki, mm. as well as Ms. Fatma Al Hasfour. So these are women, or you guys are women, that actually represent the needs yeah. of the citizens, what they want, and you actually um, um, make it possible for their voices to be heard and then document it and then help with the leadership to get to a solution for everybody. Um, Her Royal Highness, as you mentioned, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, announced that Bahraini Women's Day 2018 yeah. will be devoted to honor women in the legislative field and municipal field. Now, the theme was also chosen to celebrate 20 yeah. years since Bahraini women entered the appointed Shura Council and 15 years after their access to the elected representatives council and municipal councils. How do you value all of that support to the constant success of women in these fields? I mean, it seems to be like a cascade of success. Yeah. One thing opened the door for another thing and so mm -hmm. on. What, how do you value that? 
First, I would like really to express my thanks and appreciation, appreciation to Her Royal Highness, mm -hmm. Princess Sabika, because she, uh, she is our motivator. Yes. We are looking at her and she is really always there to empower the woman, to encourage her, to push her forward. She opened the doors for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, uh, since she started with all of these programs, all of these, uh, uh, I can say, the courses that is running in the Supreme Council of Women. Yes. It is really, uh, I believe that her image is a big motivator for all Bahraini yeah. women. And we admire the initiative really taken by Her Highness to celebrate Bahraini women. But uh, every year, but especially this year is in the legislative and municipal uh, fields, uh, which is really great. Uh, in our field now today, we are really thankful for her that somebody is really appreciating what we are doing. Yes. So this is again, again, for the woman to be, in, uh, she's really encouraged now to go into this field and to uh, contribute in the elections, to be a member in the shura or to be a member in the parliament or to be a member in the municipal uh, council, uh, which is really great. And especially, th I'm so optimistic with the fifth legislative term, yes. this one, which yes. is coming. I feel that uh, there will be big number of women, yes. women with, with us. And uh, I consider that this step as an uh, affirmation for the role of Bahraini women and their significant contribution to the development of the legislative system over the last two decades. Yes. That's what really I feel. I mean, Bahraini women have become really prominent in international association if we see that we have numbers in, I mean, in the asso association, in the organization, uh, including such as like Arab Parliament. Yes and the Inter-Parliamentary Union and the Consultative Committee of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. And we are really proud of them. Yes. Well, um, somebody to be proud of is you, Dr. Fatma Koheji. You had the Women and Child uh, Committee and you have done so much for, um, uh, for that committee and for the women in that committee. What can you tell us about um, um, the, the theoretical process of helping women and, and, and the children that, um, which your committee basically addresses? Uh, we always uh, look at laws and regulation. Uh, of course, whatever comes to us from the parliament. And uh, I feel that it's not only the shura, even this is not only our concern, yeah. even Her Royal Highness concern. Yes. That's why uh, nowadays that you see the mothers are very relaxed. Yes. That's what I can say, yes. it's not like old days. Yeah. And uh, they have their rights. Yeah. Uh, even if she's at home, she has her yes. right, not only a working woman. Children have their own right. We can see that uh, no, so many things that on the society, such as like, I mean, taking care of these kids, uh, not only at home, yes. to school, at the society, wherever they are. Yes. So we negotiate the laws and regulation, whatever comes to us. We try to really upgrade ourselves and compare Bahrain to the GCC countries and then to the uh, going out of the region, yes. whatever happening in Europe, for example, United States and Far East. Yes. We try to get the uh, most outcome of these laws and regulation, try to implement it according to our Islamic law. Yes. And it's people mm. like like you, uh, doctor, that basically make this possible for future generations. In your opinion, do you think that Bahraini women are well prepared for the 2018 elections? Uh, this question is really coming to me always whenever <laughs> I say, are they ready? Are they ready? I feel, yeah. yeah. Today, I see that the legislative achievements of Bahraini women the many gains they really acquired and have a major factor motivating women to continue political participation and contribution to the promotion of legislation and laws. Uh, they change, I mean, uh, because of man in the society's vision changed. So we see that the man is a supportive person to the yes. woman and uh, she doesn't feel that I don't have any support. If she's a mother, thing. yes. If she's a wife, it is. The family itself, they're supporting uh, the mother or 
So you see that people are really supporting women in the society to go forward and yes. really look for this legislative uh, committee and, and think of it, why not to be a member of that? And especially if she has a goal, yes. she wants to achieve that goal in the society, of course, and uh, she tries to come uh, to the parliament in a way that she can develop. Yes. Yes. the laws and uh, of course yeah. regulations w i mean before um uh, we go to our break uh, our video break um i just want to mention you see do you see the number of of of, uh, of women that are basically now um electing or, or posting themselves for ele for election i mean there are so many in the municipal council yes. as well as the parliamentary par council it's much more than it was um the last time around and you can see also how much the leadership and the um, the uh, the ministries everything are opening the door to them because mm -hmm. they do want them to be able to bring the citizens needs to them so yeah. do you value that so many women are, are actually giving it a try i really value it of yeah. course it's not because i'm a woman not because i saw uh i mean big numbers of women really putting lots of, of their effort in the society yes. and maybe because the nature of the woman at home she knows how to control yes. how to balance yeah. how really uh, to balance between her job her Correct. motherhood and as a wife so she can do it and not just that always we are thinking as women what to do to upgrade the level exactly. of the society what to do to upgrade the level of our children yeah. so we have ambition we have uh, inside ourselves we have things that we want to give it to the society so i think they are going to be great in their position and the number what i'm yes. saying when i go around i'm really Impressed astonished and yes. uh, it's really something yes. i couldn't believe that within i mean after only four terms this is our fifth and the number is getting really big yes that means maybe the sixth will be more than the minimum. yes probably probably, probably yeah. Well, the president of the Eurogolf Information Center, Dr. Mitchell Belfer, and head of the research at the center, Ms. Sinjia Bianco, also highlighted the importance of empowering women in the parliamentary and political fields. Basically, since the beginning of uh, the Bahrain direct democratic process, you've had a lot of women engagement. And I've met over the years some wonderful uh, women uh, members of parliament, as well as members of the Shura Council, I find uh, that the women, and, and even, I have to say, women who are in very important positions on defense and security, um, you know, and different, different types of agendas, and to see more women, in, you know, being um, uh, interested in politics and entering and trying to enter and competing over seats in parliament is an amazing, it's an amazing thing to see. Um, this kind of women's empowerment is not only not, you know, uh, omitted, from many discussions about Bahrain, but it's actually a fundamental part of the country. Women empowerment is a key to the success of the country. It's too small not to include women, uh, but it's never not included women. So going back to the beginning of the country, uh, women have been involved in state building all along. Um, and so it stands to reason that women would also participate more and more as time goes on in the political process and, and decision making. So um, I, I think um, that I, I'm not the only one to welcome women into the political system there. Um, I wouldn't say that women's struggles are over, they're not over anywhere, but in Bahrain they're certainly a lot easier than they are in other countries. And so I, I welcome and uh, I know that every Bahraini man that I've ever met also welcomes more and more women uh, engagement and empowerment uh, in the political system, just as in the other sectors of, uh, of the country. Studies have proven that uh, having more women taking part into the political process and into the uh, body of decision making and, uh, and policy making has a, a, a much more beneficial impact uh, in terms of um, not only widening the representativeness of uh, the body, in this case the parliament, but also uh, uh, having uh, adding more, a more diverse uh, range of views and also uh, a different kind of approach to policy making and, uh, and decision making. Um, women are um, 
have, have an absolutely crucial role in any country uh, from a social point of view and most often from a, an economic point of view. And in Bahrain, uh, there, is a, there is a good example about that. So it's vital, it's natural that they should also have uh, a, a representation in the political uh, scene of said country because that's the only way that they can reinforce the already big role that they play at the social and economic level. And in Bahrain, uh, the Supreme Council for Women has spearheaded uh, uh, a number of uh, initiatives that have encouraged more people, more women to run uh, for office. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it will be very interesting for observers and for other policymakers around the world to see whether Bahraini citizens have confidence in uh, their, their women, their, their female citizens uh, stepping up to uh, representing uh, the, the country and the nation and how much confidence uh, that will, there will be. That's, I think, the uh, next step for any Arab country's uh, political development in terms of empowering uh, citizens to um, actually have more confidence into women running for parliament. Well, still continuing on the fact that there's so many women candidates that are coming out, I think it's an interesting subject that we should talk more about. The number, the actual number of women candidates has increased by 56%. That is a huge number compared to the previous elections. What's your view uh, about uh, such escalations and uh, significance? Well, of course, everything has a reason behind it. So the, the legislative achievement of Bahraini women, and they gained a lot and acquired a lot and have been a major factor in motivating women to continue political participation yeah. Yeah, and contribution to the promotion of legislation and law. Home is not a place for the woman anymore. Yes. No, it's not like before, of course. They are part of the country, political and development process, they feel. So that's why they want to be there. And moreover, the unlimited support of women by the wise leadership, yes. I feel. Yes. This is very important when they see, feel that uh, the leadership is behind them. They are supporting them. And the Supreme Council of Women, as we mentioned, that they are playing a very big role. So therefore, it is not a surprise to see more women participating in the parliamentary, of course, parliamentary and municipal elections, yes. I feel. Yes. Um, uh, Dr. Kuhiji, another really important thing to mention is that the women that are electing themselves or that are nominating themselves, um, uh, you see the variety of education and the levels of education they have as well as experiences. Do you think that's an important thing that they should have if they are going into the parliament? Yes, of course. Yeah. I feel that education is very important. I mean that they should be educated in all fields yeah. because you don't know what you're going to face when you are there, either in the parliament or in the shura. Topics comes to you, people talk to you, and people assume that you know. Mm. So it's very important for us really to educate ourselves before we take this step, this initiative step, that I want to be there. All right, are you ready? Yes. Internally, are you ready? Correct. Can you analyze the situation? This comes all because of the education that you've been through. So it's very good when you see that in the, I mean, in the parliament today or in the shura, we are 40 person, but from different fields. Yes. We are really, I mean, when we get together, it's like we are, at the end, we are one unit. Yes. Because we support each other, and especially in the committees. For example, I'm in the services committee. Yes. We are coming from different background, but all of us, when we are looking at laws and regulations, yeah. we analyze it according to our background, our experience, our education. And we hope at the end that we take the decision to be the right for that law or that re and regulation. And that's why the decisions are usually very comprehensive because yes. of this multidisciplinary Multi team yes. that goes in there. Well, from your point of view, what are the elements that any woman candidate should have in order to succeed in the election? Uh, okay. First, I think that she should be uh, to the, I mean, open to the media. Mm -hmm. because media would help her a lot these days media is a big support for anyone that but 
she should really be careful because it's a weapon with two-sided. Yes. I mean, it's not okay, I'm going to depend on media, maybe it's going to break the bone. I, uh, and on the other side, uh, she has to put, uh, I mean, goals yes. that are not just in the sky, dreams in the sky. Yeah. No. Attainable. I mean, if, yeah. And if you want to promise, don't give promises to people that you won't be able to achieve yes. or it's not adaptable. Yes. And uh, I feel that uh, this is very important for not only for women, for anyone, yeah. that uh, when you say that, I mean, give a promises, mm -hmm. don't give a promises that is not adaptable. Or keep it. Not, yeah, you cannot keep it and you cannot really, it sh I mean, it should be, women must really put forward vital and flexible uh, and implementable uh, electoral uh, programs. It's not just I'm going to, uh, yeah. yeah. I feel uh, today after the last four terms, mm -hmm. uh, people really became more aware of these things. They know that from their experience, those who did not achieve or did not really succeed because they put uh, uh, goals that they, uh, I mean, unbelievable, of yes. course, I mean. Yeah. So uh, today, yeah, if they want to say something, they promise it should be implicable. Yeah. It's not just, I will say, I will do this and no. It is very important. I'm all, then no matter what effort you put, you're going to break it. Yes, yes. If Especially that the cons constituents are very yeah. aware and, and yeah. they really are aware about what are the things that they need to be done in their areas. Yes. So they expect their yeah. representative to also know and to be more thorough when it comes to that. Do you agree? Yes, of course. Yes, it's very important. As I said, I mean, people now aware are aware. People yeah. are educated more. Yeah. What does it mean, the election? Yeah. It's not just, I mean, you promise and then you won't be able to do it. On the other side, uh, people are looking for, for candidates that fulfill their need. Yeah. It's not that I will come and I will be there. No. They will elect you if they felt that you have characters in yourself and you are aware of what you're saying. You know what is their need, not personal need, yeah. the society need. How could I really develop the society from here to here? It's not that personal needs anymore, I yeah. believe. People became really aware of these things. When they look and they, uh, when they want to vote for somebody, they will say that I give you my voice, but what you're going to do for the society, for the future of the society, yeah. for the future of my children. This is very important. Yes. Well, um, mm. uh, messages transmitted by means of media can change or mobilize mm. citizens to take certain actions or choices, especially with this huge boom in social media that has happened. How can women benefit from such an effect during their election campaign? Today, Bahraini women have an advanced mind and mindset. It's not like before. They are very clever. Therefore, they must invest in available media, I believe, in highlighting their image and asserting their position. Yeah. So then it will be easy for them to go. Uh, this could be done through exposure to various media, especially social media, as we mentioned earlier, which have become an important media platform for reaching a large segment of citizens. And it's very easy if they know how to deal with it. But as we said, it is again a weapon, two-sided weapon. Yes. I cannot just, uh, okay, I will use the media, but at the end, what's going to happened to me. The media really visibility of Bahraini women must be based on facts about their achievements and how they contribute. Yeah. The contribution is very important. So it's a focus on how they could contribute in drafting the important legislation that raise the name of the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Um, Put on that point, ending that point, what is the role that civil society institutions can play in terms of supporting women during the election? I think that the civil society institutions are key element in educating community members. It's very important when we educate either children or teenagers or member of in the society. Therefore, it has a national and social responsibility yes. to enhance the image of Bahraini woman and the role she plays in promoting society, 
through her presence in the parliament and municipal councils. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, before it was not like this, yes. you know, we, uh, we can recall and yeah. we have some memories. But today, again, I said, because people became experienced in the legislation system, how it goes and how to, uh, how to elect, and how to put themselves into the election. Yeah. So it is very important. But yes, why not? I mean, the civil society's institution, I believe they are really playing very, very big uh, role in the movement of the election itself yes. too. Well, when it comes to the elections themselves and, and people going to elect on the 24th of November, hopefully, yeah. um, it is a very great responsibility and it is um, the right of the um, uh, the citizens to go vote and it's also their obligation to go vote yes. for the country. Um, what can you tell us about um, uh, the system that uh, you predict some of the people will do? Are they going to, um, uh, do you think it's going to be they're going to read about the history of the candidates and maybe find out if they've done something for the society? What is the usual procedure when one goes to vote? Uh, today from, I mean when we get together, mm. I listen to people that they are talking about, uh, I mean, who we are going to vote for, okay? Yeah. Uh, I realized really that this generation is very clever. Yeah. And they are digging in the media yes. to read about his history. Yes. So my advice for those who want to really, I mean, look forward to be in the election or in the future that Take care of yourself. Yes. Always be on the right track. Yes. Because nowadays nothing could be nothing really is as away and it's hidden. Yeah. No. And uh, people really want to put their trust in a person who's, who is trustworthy. Yes. I do not want to vote for someone I don't know who is this. It's not that you look nice. Yes. It's not that anymore. It's about your achievements yes. and what you did sure. do. What you did from before. Yes. It's not today what you want to do because this is like a voluntary work. True. Yeah, you are going to have the position in the parliament, but you should put you, uh, yourself in a position that I am willing to support people. Yes. It's not that the chair I'm sitting on it. Yes. No, it's that how I achieve things to improve the level of the society and especially if we wanted, as we said earlier, that to really with the level of different or open countries. Yes, yes it's not just like before, old days. Yes. Nowadays, if you wanted to be there, people can dig your history and they know what kind of people yes. you your are. Client, person. Your clients are your constituents and they yes. will look for everything that they can find yes. out about you sure. and because they want to see how are you going to help them and that's why yes. they dig. It's not It's not for other, any other reasons. Yes. Well, we've almost gotten to the end of our show. Is there anything that you would like to add before we finish? Uh, about really? the general <laughs> woman process and woman empowerment. Yes, uh, I really encourage women to empower herself in the politic. It's not because you want to go and to be in the parliament. It's how to deal. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you're right. This is your right. Yeah. This is your children's right. Tomorrow you want to sit and talk to your kids, yeah. what you're going to talk about Correct. it. How you're going to educate your children for the future. How you're going to open their mind. It's not that today, whatever the man said, I'm going to do. That was long time ago. Correct. I mean, women really were, okay, my husband said, I elect this person. Today is not it's like not that, that anymore. They have their no. own opinions. So it's very important that to, I mean, really empower yourself. No need to go, I mean, just empower yourself. You should know what's going on on Correct. the island. And it's like every four years, you have to do it. Today you are here, tomorrow your children would be there. Correct. But how I'm going to pass over the information to my kids, the how to choose their right. This is your right in the society. Right. Today you are here to have, to vote for your right. Yeah. Vote for your right, it's not that. And uh, I feel that beside that, even the woman is, even if she's at home, she is finding her rights it's not like before anymore. Yeah. Because today, when you empower yourself with the legislation and these things, you know what is for you and what is not for you. Yes. Then my children will learn, this yeah. is my right, 
This is the society's right. The yes, and this is the people's right. Yeah. So, you know, it is like a ring. We are in the same ring going around and around. So it's not that you are at home, you're not playing a part in what's going on in the country. Exactly. Thank you so much for all of this information you gave us, Dr. Fatma Kohiji. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching. And see you next week in another episode of Inside Edition.